Good evening, I'm Zoe Gennart and welcome to my studio. Sorry. There's a pussy cat asleep on the floor down here. Right where I want to stand. I think he does it on purpose. Now he's doing the cute act. All four paws out, stretched out as far as he can go, laid on his back, showing his tummy off. Oh, he has. He has rolled over a little bit, so I can stand a little bit more comfortably. Which isn't going to be very comfortable at all. Because my back's hurting me tonight. But we will just get on with things. Ah, uh, so, number eight. And then number A. And then that's done. So, which one of these? Oh, these. That one and that one. Hmm, convinced I have a tiny hair in my mouth. Oh well. So today has proven to be an interesting day in that went out this morning in the car, drove into the local town, no problem, got there, no problem, had to move the car, no problem. Came back to the car to uh, to leave to come back home. Car wouldn't car wouldn't start. Wouldn't turn over. Um, just click. <laughs> That's flat battery. So, so quite a lot of miles from home with a flat battery. Hmm. That was fun. So I called out. The, uh, I was going to say the local, it's not so local, the uh, motoring organisation, of which I'm a member, they came out and the battery's faulty. Well, the battery had gone faulty, not bad, given it's about 10 years old, 12 years old, I think. 12 year old battery. And uh, you have reached the voice mailbox of it was just Gino. marginally. Is my number nine on there? They've gone straight to A. Okay. Um, it was just marginally not enough capacity to actually start the car. Just wait fully, for the virtually tone. fully charged, but just not enough capacity. A little bit more charge and it would have started the car, but we have had that before. In fact, I had that a couple of days ago. Ten minutes on a slow charger and it was, uh, it was good to go. But uh, today... Two engine starts obviously was uh, a little bit too much for it. So I then had to have a new battery installed because there's no point in just starting it and as it, well, we could have just started it and gone home. Uh, and I could potentially even have put the battery on charge, um, but it would have happened again. So that was a Fun morning and afternoon, early afternoon, shall we say? If you need further assistance, enter pound now. Still. So that was about 170 pounds that I didn't want to spend. Well, no, that's not strictly true. I didn't mind spending it. I mean, after all, it was. Um, we needed it to make the car work, but. I would rather not have had to spend it at this moment in time. Goodbye. So I'll have to make sure I get some, some of the pyrography up in the shop. 
I sell two pieces and I just pay for the battery. One of the one of the funny things though was uh, of course while the uh, the technician was busy working on it, talking to him about cars, as you kind of do, um, specifically about electric cars, and because uh, I'm I'm interested in getting an electric car, but well. Possibly even this year, I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, I'm interested in getting an electric car because a lot of mileage that we do is quite uh, quite short distance stuff. And uh, we, Lady Zara has a car, so if we did need to go a long distance, we can always use the other car. Um, but it then allows us to do sort of lots of uh, super cheap mileage locally. Uh, but the uh, the interesting thing from the uh, from the motoring organisation, well, I was talking to them, they they do go out to quite a few electric cars. Funnily enough, with flat batteries. That's not the drive batteries, the big uh, 40 kilowatt hour lithium ion cells. It's the standard 12 volt battery that they all have in there to run their local electrics and the lights and things. Because the the big drive packs are about 300 odd volts. So plug that into a 12 volt bulb. It doesn't last very long. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, uh, the 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 packs charge. You charge the pack. The pack charges the 12 volt battery, which then runs the you know, the radio and the lights and things like that. And uh, Apparently they do from t well, they do or can from time to time go flat. And when that happens, what happens? Well, what happens apparently is that if the battery gets too low, the main lithium-ion pack refuses to charge it because it thinks it's pretty. Which I suppose it is. And uh, if that battery is flat, the car won't start because there's nothing to run the electronics. <laughs> which then take the power from the main thing so they have to go out and, and jump start electric cars so they put enough power in it to bring the voltage up and then the, the main pack goes oh that's fine here you go here's lots of charge and uh, and, then, and then it works so you can, you can literally jump start an electric car i find that funny i find it interesting uh, but I do find it kind of ironic, in a way. Stale. Just one of those things to be aware of. If you're thinking of buying an electric car, you might need to jump start it. Can you pay a jump leads? Just in case. So one of those it sounds like a trivia quiz. Can you uh, can you jump start an electric car? Yes, you can. Now, I knew they used normal twelve volt batteries, but it never occurred to me that they'd go flat. <laughs> Oh, that you'd need to jump start them. If they do. If I ever go looking at them, uh, as I possibly will, maybe hopefully this year, 
happy if I just go looking at them from the point of view of just taking a look. Uh, seeing what's uh, test driving if you might ask that question. Uh, where is the battery and how do you jump start it? <laughs> Mind you, having swapped the battery today in my car, I have come across the slight issue of the vehicle security. The radio, or more precisely, the electronics. Uh, the, uh, I was about to say the entertainment control, but in my car it's the uh, the complete audio visual setup uh, system, the television, the CD player, the, the um, GPS, the satellite navigation, and the voice control and the telephone control, none of which work because I've had the battery disconnected, uh, the security kicks in and um, you need to put a PIN number in in order to re-enable everything. It's a security measure in case it gets nicked then whoever it gets sold to basically can't profit from it because, or whoever nicks it can't profit from it uh, because it won't work. So what you have to do is get a... because uh, we were never supplied with the code get a dealer to tell us what the code is and uh, my local dealer who I normally go to he closes it lunchtime on uh, on a Saturday so they just closed when we reconnected the battery and found out they needed this code that we didn't have and uh, other dealers won't give you it you've actually to go in with the vehicle registration document the vehicle and you in order for them to give you what the code would be you got to prove you haven't been stolen it basically So now I have to wait until Monday, um, at the earliest, before I can talk to my local dealer, who will hopefully won't require me to actually go in with the vehicle registration document, since I've been out here to pick it up a number of times, so hopefully they'll uh, just give me the code over the phone, otherwise I'll have to go in. be a bit of a pain in the neck but at the moment I can't use things like the satellite navigation and the telephone no I don't think the telephone works either it, do, it works but um, only if you use the telephone control pad on the phone which of course the whole point of the hands free is that you don't have to do that especially while you're driving so that doesn't work either and the voice control, which is in, I've got in my car, also doesn't work for the same reason. It's all in the same uh, console device. Actually, I've had my car that long now that when I got my car, they. Um, Digital TV had launched in the UK, but it was still being rolled out. So I actually have a television in my car. It's an analog television, which of course no longer works now. Which is a great pity. That used to be really good on long journeys, or journeys, because I used to spend a lot of time. I used to work in sales. So I used to spend a lot of time on the motorway. And a lot of time in traffic jams. And I tell you, when you sit in a traffic jam, not going anywhere, be able to put the television on and watch a program is quite, quite. It makes the time pass quite quickly. You don't necessarily miss your favourite programs when you're driving, of course. When you're moving, though, the picture cuts out, so you can't actually watch the television while you're driving, but you can listen to it, which is also quite useful. When you're getting back late and uh, your favourite program is on and you're missing it. Uh, 
Yeah, I still find, still find it funny that you sometimes need to jumpstart electric cars. Yeah, as I found out today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when I um, because I, as I might keep mentioning, I'm interested in electric car. But I lo I'm looking forward to when uh, uh, when I go and uh, and test drive one at some point, some point in the future. Uh, asking asking the the dealer, where is the battery, and how easy is it to jump start? <laughs> Because <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if half the dealers didn't know that know that that, that happens sometimes. Lesser known facts of electric cars. Sometimes they need jump starting. So, we're doing this tonight um, rather than the wood carving. If anybody uh, came looking for wood carving, for uh, two reasons actually. Now, well, it was dirty with one reason. The, the, the reason being that um, the carving vice that I have effectively only works uh, in one way which means I've got to look down whilst I'm carving hold my head down and uh, that gets really tiring on the neck muscles and because I don't carve seven days a week soon 65 days a year you know I don't carve a lot um, the neck muscles don't build up stamina if you like so after a few days it starts to get really sort of tiring and on the neck and the sort of two hours starts to take a because that's how long a broadcast for uh, starts to take its toll so we've done it well it was uh, done sort of five days of, uh, of carving so tonight was a case of um, switch to something which I can do upright without having to sort of lean over and it lets yeah, neck muscles relax and I'll do the same thing tomorrow night do this as well uh, so that then when we get to Monday uh, I can go back to carving and uh, do some more on the gibber and I'm not sort of having to sort of take three weeks off or stuff to, to you know, recover from neck pain and things like that so if you are wondering why I'm not carving, that's the reason. So sorry about it, but um, it does mean you'll get overall more carving than I would do if I had to stop uh, with a, a neck problem. I am hoping uh, maybe later this year then um, it's a case of at, at the moment saving up, which with little spare money at the moment due to certain circumstances means that it will take a while but um, what I'm going to save up for is a carving vice which is a, is a different style wish I'd have real well I wish I'd have known at the time but of course that's the um, that's the whole thing isn't it experience is uh, a wonderful thing um, because if I had known what I know now I wouldn't have bought the carving vice that I bought I'd have bought a different one, which I thought I liked, but I wasn't sure whether I needed, you know, what kind of advice I needed. So I got a re relatively cheap one. It's just proven to be a, a poor investment, shall we say. But one that I kind of needed to do to find out. So um, what I'll be doing is getting a... A, uh, a carving vice which effectively sits in a ball joint um, I'd say like in my camera here but you can't see it but it's a ball uh, 
with a rod sticky at the top with a platform on you put the wood or the work on top of the platform. The ball then sits in a cup which is screwed or clamped or whatever to the desk. But because it's in a ball, or it's a ball in, in a clamp, you can literally move the piece to 180 degrees in literally any direction. So any, you know, it's like a mushroom top if you see what I mean. Um, and because of that what it means is I can I can sit I would be able to sit the work uh, on the bench I say set the, you know, the vice on the bench but with the with the work at this sort of angle the same angle that you're looking at this or I'm looking at this uh, easel at, which is about, about this one's about 45 degrees but 45 50 degrees 60 degrees something like that and then then I'm not actually having to lean over to do the carving. I can sort of, it would be like I'd be carving here on this. And I can stand straight up uh, without the stresses of, uh, of having to lean over whilst I'm carving. So that's uh, something I am looking forward to, if you see what I mean. And we should have known about that when I first bought it, but because, uh, you know, the other type generally speaking were sort of two or three times more expensive than the one I got which I'm sure is all right for some people uh, but not uh, not for me so it will be nice to uh, to swap it out at the moment though it's it's the only <laughs> it's the only vice I've got carving vice that is actually it probably is the only vice I've got so a bit of English there, I guess. Um, and uh, then I, I guess a carving will be sort of something I can do more frequently. Hello, Wolfie. How are you? Welcome to the stream this evening. How's your day been today? Mine has been a little bit eventful. Because I went out this morning with Lady Zara in the car, went to the local town, we went around the local town, came back to the car, moved the car, went around the local town a bit more, came back to the car, turned the key and nothing happened. I had a flat battery. So we were quite sad as well and you're sad, why are you sad? We had to get a motor, one of the motoring help organisations out to uh, to jumpstart our car. And as I was telling everybody earlier, uh, one of the funny things I have found out is sometimes you need to jumpstart electric cars. If you had a go, to win 10 grand and lose zero. Uh, go on. Tell tell me you won zero and lost ten. Nice for, for your ranking. <laughs> so what did you manage? Seven zero. Oh, and then you lost. <laughs> okay. Well, at least it's better you lose it on game eight rather than uh, rather than game ten. That would have been uh, really kicker. Do you have to win 10 0 or um, to, to have a ranking, or is that just what you were aiming for? And can you? Have you got another opportunity to, to try and uh, rank, or is that it for a, a period of time? I see. So the, the rank you based on the performance in the 10 games. Okay. So 
So did you achieve a ranking then despite uh, despite losing a game? I'm guessing that you might have gone on to win the other the other two. They still got two more to play. Okay, not uh, just make sure you win those. Yeah, you didn't meet your personal goal, but there'll be other times. Don't let it rattle you though, otherwise you 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 might be in danger of losing your uh, your, your next two games, which would make it feel worse. I could say it's only a game, but it's not really, is it? <laughs> it's much more than that. When you're trying for these things, it's. Uh, it's more important that it's just being a game. I'm kind of a bit odd. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I'm actually a relatively competitive person. Or quite a competitive person. But it's... Uh, uh, and especially when I used to work in sales, I mean, that is about competing. Um, but it was interesting, all my colleagues thought I was highly uncompetitive. No, um, I was highly the opposite, I wasn't competitive at all. Um, so I clearly, um, I, I disguised it very well. Because quite often, you know, the sales and other people that do these sorts of Characterization type tests where you do, uh, you know, you, you take a test and it says, you know, what sort of characteristics you are. And generally they sort of will um, group them into like colours and things like that. So red being highly competitive, blue being highly calm, and these sorts of things. And uh, uh, it, it always amused me. I always portray the opposite of what I actually am. Seven one and two zero. Okay, well, that actually doesn't sound bad to me. Doesn't sound bad at all. These days, I don't compete uh, for anything really. It's, uh, it's really it doesn't float my boat, as I say. I don't. Uh, I don't particularly find it um, serves me a purpose to compete with things. So. If somebody beats me at something, yeah. there is one thing about um, it as well is that because of that, I don't get stressed about things. You say. I'm just, much more relaxed than uh, than the people that do compete for things. See that at work when we have sort of um, from time to time sort of like team building event type things where I don't know you, you might play some like indoor golf for example and that's people that are you know, getting all upset because somebody accidentally touched a ball or whatever, you know, and they're getting all upset because they're not going to win anymore and life's all bad and I'm nah, keep my ball halfway around the room if you like. I need the third year, you have to play a 
third version on another map, okay. That sounds really complicated, does that? I don't have all that complication in my life. I get to play a game just because it's fun. <laughs> I mean, I know you see these esports players and things that, you know, are playing, I don't know, highly competitive. I don't know, Call of Duty or something. I know they get thousands of pounds for winning and tens of thousands of pounds and stuff like that, but it it sort of seems like it's turned. Well, it has. It's turned a, a, you know, a fun thing into a job, and so I, I guess if you like that job, you play to beat yourself. Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. But it's still a, still a lot of pressure on yourself, you know, because you know you can beat yourself. Because if you if you if you couldn't beat yourself, there wouldn't be any point in uh, in playing. If you see what I mean, I'm trying to prove it. So you want to you're proving it to yourself, so you know you can do it. So why bother? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a milestone, isn't it? It's. Uh, I don't know. It it sounds like I'm being derogative saying it's a tick in the box, but it's it's a mark. It's a it's a recognition that you have been able to achieve something, and that you you are getting better. So yes, I, f I follow it. I just uh, I understand it. As I say, these days I don't uh, I don't especially subscribe to that sort of thing myself. I have a laid-back existence. I wish you luck with it anyway. I'm not I'm not that sure I could play a game that much to actually be able to achieve a ranking in it if the game had them. I kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's like streaming, I kind of like to do different things. And uh, you know, for things like ranking and stuff like that, you've got to practice a lot. And um, I don't necessarily I'm going to say I don't necessarily have the patience to pack. I do, and I can, because I can just keep going and going and going. But it, it's having the patience and it being fun, two completely different things. I wasn't. I didn't think. I wasn't thinking I'd finish this tonight. But I don't know. I'm starting to get the feeling I might. No, I was going to say. Luckily, I've got another one. <laughs> but at least one more. Two more. Yeah, at least two more. So. I do finish this, it's not really a problem. I don't have to sort of dig out the laser cutter kit or anything like that and start building that. Especially since I'd be working down on the desk there, which is kind of what I was trying to avoid doing this. I do enjoy this standing desk though. I've always enjoyed working at the standing desk for the last, well, first encountered them about 40 odd years ago now. Would it be about 40 odd years ago? Well, uh, 38, 37, something like that. 
uh, I started as an apprentice and uh, as part of that I worked in an electronic repair shop and uh, they had standing desks and they were fantastic to work at. But I've never, never actually had one until last year. Not actually sure why, because I always enjoyed working at them, but uh, Lady Zara bought me this one. And uh, I guess the difference about this one is it's motorized, it goes up and down. And uh, so I can, I can use it as a normal desk and sit at it, or I can stand up and work at it as well is what I'm doing now, so uh, and I can raise and lower it depending on what I want to work on, and uh, wonderful thing. Yeah, the other thing for me is uh, I get tired of sitting sometimes. I get, I sit too much. I get restless legs. I have to keep moving my legs and I can't sit still. So um, being able to stand up and do stuff is uh, it's a lot more comfortable. It is because you, you know, you, you. Is it fun beating yourself? I mean, the process of beating yourself is fun because you, you're playing the game, but. Or whatever it is you're trying to beat yourself with. And, uh, you know, why do it if it's not fun? But. It's kind of. I don't know, it's like, it's, it's like speed running things, isn't it? Where you know, you're trying to shave a tenth of a second off something and uh, it, it becomes tedious after a while to, uh, to just carry on. But that's me. Other people are different. I mean, the, the people who have, I mean, I, you know, I've watched quite a few of these Factorio speedrunners. You know, they're doing, launching a rocket in under two hours. Um, and they're, they're practicing time after time after time, shaving tenths of a second off, you know, and move, you know, sitting and calculating and working which is the quickest way to get from one point to the other so that they can they can save half a second and stuff like that and uh, I, I don't know it just strikes me as not what I do every day you do take air yeah I don't know I mean I, I In, in some ways, things, things like speedrunning or, well, you know, beating you on time to do something um, is kind of fascinating to me. And it's the sort of thing I might have a go once, literally once, and then uh, I can't be bothered. It's not so bad, you know, um, you know, these sorts of games where the, and I suppose some of the FPS games are, are like that, because they're never the same twice. It, it's not, it's not bad. You know, you've got more, more fun in repeating the same actions time after time after time. Whereas if it was something like Factorio speedrunning, for example, they're using the same map every single time. And, uh, 
So I'm just Theo. He's laid fast asleep down there. Stretched out. Yeah, Superman pose. And he is literally stretched out exactly where it's most comfortable for me to stand. And he's not moving. I almost think he's doing it on purpose. Uh, but he was there first. And instead of kicking him out of the way, gently, uh, I've sort of just accommodated him. But <laughs> it means I'm standing slightly awkward. And one leg is currently going to sleep. And now I've got pins and needles because I've just shifted my weight. But he's cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I will say you're lucky having all day to uh, to both practice and to uh, relax and have fun. I was about to say after work, but to some extent that's fun because I like the job that I do. I have to do things like programming from time to time and stuff like that, and I quite enjoy it. So um, I have a, I do have a job that I enjoy doing, and I like doing, and I can do well, and people think I can do well, which is uh, all the best, better. So it's, uh, yes, I get paid to have fun. She's a bit frustrating as well, but. That's mainly because the, the, the tools that would make the fun bit even more fun uh, are not available to us. the tusk or the highlight on the tusk So, for the Zaragan out, out household, uh, an important event is getting closer. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's getting closer. And uh, when that happens, it does mean that I would then potentially be able to go and do that glass work course that I've been wanting to do now for over a year. Only a one day course. But uh, I then get to find out whether I actually will like working with glass or not. <laughs> that, um, you know, we talk, just talking then about practicing things with games and things, that actually is something, when I learn something new, like a new craft, like glasswork would be, for example, or carving was, or pyrography. Um, I have the patience to continuously practice that for hours and days on end until I am reasonably proficient and then I have to do something else. So I'm kind of, yeah, I mentioned I'm kind of odd in that way. I uh, do have that, yeah, that ability to, well, patience to keep on practicing stuff time after time after time until I'm reasonably proficient. But yeah, so I am 
in a way, I mean, it's it will happen when it happens, but I'm in a way starting to look forward to uh, that being a possibility of being able to uh, try some glass work. Unfortunately, the nearest place is about an hour's drive from here, but. I hit speed running. Yeah. Hypercritical. Hypercritical. Um, about the work I'm doing, probably. But otherwise, I'm not quite sure I understand why. Oh, hypocritical. Hypocritical. Yes, possibly. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> I suppose it is, in a way. Um. Don't particularly think of it that way, um, but that's applying both. It's not. It's, it's not kind. Of, it's not very much like saying, "I don't understand how somebody else does it, but I can." But I can't do it for games either. Crafts. Yeah. I can be super, super patient, if you like, continuously practicing, 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 getting better, challenging myself all the time, just like you were saying with the games in a way, or, or, or the ranking, you know, it's, yeah. last time I, you know, carved Ruth, this time I'm carving a, a, a gibber, which is a completely different thing and is a little bit harder, and, yeah, the equivalent of speed running, yeah, um, I think, I think it would be a more direct comparison with speedrunning if I would continuously practice the same piece, so that you know I carved whatever it was in instead of taking twenty hours, I, t you know, I did it again and I took nineteen, then I took eighteen, and took seventeen. It's like actually um, another sort of example of that same thing was back when I was fourteen. I used to cycle to work. I used to work, and uh, on the route there was a, a really large hill uh, on a dual carriageway main road. And when I first started cycling there, I get let's let's say ten yards up the road, and every time I went on that route, what I used to do is go a little bit further to you know like to the next lamppost or to that next bit. And just kept going a little bit more, and eventually I could cycle the whole way up the the um, up the hill, non-stop, and then at a reasonable pace. And um, Lady Zara and I went to a gym for a while, for a period, uh, a couple of years, so years ago, because we could get it free. And uh, on the walking machine, one of the things I always used to do on that was. Uh, walk, uh, you know, ten yards more, or walk at a, another quarter degree angle, which makes it harder to walk. Every day, just that little bit more, that little bit more, just keep and make it harder and harder. So that's more like a speed running thing. And yeah, I had the patience to do that, but do it with a game, and I'll get bored with a game, and I don't. I, it's, I am literally doing what you would do with the game, the same thing time after time after time. And challenging myself and making it more difficult so I get better, but with the game I get bored. Hmm. Yeah, master it move up, yeah. Although I guess with speedrunning it's always a case of can I get that little bit faster and that little bit faster. Um, I guess the, there must be a point where they they do it at, you know, 1 minute 57, I'll say 1 hour 57 minutes and 29 seconds, and that's it, they cannot get any faster, having tried tens and tens and tens, and maybe they go, oh, at that point I give up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it, now that we sort of just, I, I mean, I understand it, Wolfie, it's just games. Games don't have that effect on me, that's just me. I understand, you know, 
it's the same thing really in some ways but I just don't know why games are different to me. Yeah, they are. They are indeed. They're absolutely, um, you know, the um, uh, amazing. It's amazing the things that you can do in a game that, even a simulation, whatever the game is, um, it's amazing what you can do and the really cool things and they can be really challenging and really fun to do and yeah. <laughs> I mean, odd, literally sort of odd half hours here and there for the past several weeks. I, I've been playing uh, Factoria, but I just get in, you know, like 10 minutes in while I'm waiting for the oven to heat up and things like that. And uh, uh, one of the things I've been trying trying to do out there this time is actually the opposite of speed running. Slow down. And do things like, you know, instead of um, speed, uh, slow down to speed up. So, you know, instead of sort of building five furnaces, I build 24 furnaces, you know, uh, and, and build five ranks of them, uh, all making steel so that we, you know, and, and things like that. And it's, it's taking an awful long time to get. Well, it took an awful long time to get to just the um, the grey science and then the blue science and, and at this stage I haven't even got yellow science and I've got a trade network and you know, I've got a large a large base and there's a red circuit uh, production so it's a mega base style it's not a mega base but it's it's a mega base style there's you know, red circuits are made down there there's um, batteries made over there um, blue science is made up there and iron smelted over there copper smelted over there uh, all run around with trains and stuff and it's now getting to the point where I'm getting sort of I can get sort of three or four science per second and you know even even the which one have I just done I can't remember which one it was but it was like a thousand the research was a uh, 1500 so that thing, don't know. Um, because it was a purple, so purple and the, low, the lower four sciences, um, and that sort of took about thirty seconds, just because there's all of that stuff already built. And um, so, you know, take, taking time to start, to force myself to start slow is now starting to speed up. Well, then the problem is yellow science. Where do I put it? <laughs> oh dear. It, it's kind of fun because, as, as you probably know, the, the way in which people build the building factory is with the main bus. And I have a main bus. But. The only thing that's on that main boss is what people call the mall. You know, it's it's the it's the machines that build the things that you build with, like the rail tracks or the um, assembly machines or the pipes. So I've got this this thing that's building all of these, um, which is being fed from the main boss. And it's the only thing that's being fed from the main boss. Uh, so I've got this great big white bus with next to nothing on it. It's kind of funny.
I went to quite a bit of trouble as well to get to put all the stations in and what have you to, to transport all this stuff and feed it into the bus and I'm not using it. Two terrible days. Look, you, you lost a kilogram. Well, a kilogram's not a bad, uh, bad weight loss, and you know that's it's um, weight loss is a aggregate, uh, a long-term thing. In actual sort of body mass weight loss. That is, you know, a, a couple of a couple of days don't necessarily change much. It's the sort of the long-term thing that uh, changes it more significantly. But congratulations on two kilograms, as long as you did it over a reasonable period of time. And it's the right thing for you to do. Don't go losing weight just to be extremely thin. There's no point in it. If it's for a health reason, fine. But. Uh, Don't be influenced by people. All these people say, you've got to be thin. Mm, you don't have to be thin. You have to be a, a normal weight. Anyway, for uh, for about 40 years, I was not about 40 years. No, it must be more, it must be less than that. But for an awfully long time, I, I was always exactly the same weight. It didn't matter what I did or ate. Um, but I guess I was making my own food, so I was eating reasonably healthily. But I, I was the same weight for as for the as long as I can remember. I have now put a bit of weight on. People do that when they get old. But I've kind of put a bit of weight on and stopped. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'll take your word for it. Better to be healthy, whatever healthy means. And sometimes health is mental health, what you think about yourself and stuff like that. But do it, do it slow, well as you, you appear to be, do it slow and steady. Don't go mad. That's, uh, safer, healthier and better long term uh, to take your time doing it. Mm, now, that, now that I'm getting old, 
I have to eat less because I now work from home, as I've mentioned. So I don't go out a lot. <laughs> so I don't walk anything like as much as I used to do. So I have to eat a lot less. Otherwise I would really start piling on weight, I guess. Just eat healthier. You are doing so. Well done. Eat healthy, yeah. That's the best thing to do. Slow, steady, change the way in which you eat. So that, and change it in a way that you like, because if you don't like what you're eating, what you, you'll find it a real problem. But. Changing, uh, changing your diet, better diet is the best way to do it. I've just realised Theo's gone. Which is a good job, otherwise I'd be standing on him because I've never stood normally. If I'd realised he was gaining up, I'd have picked him up and let him uh, take a look at the stream, but he's gone. He sneaked out on me. No, he yeah, he's gone completely. For some reason, just where I'm stood now is his, is his current favourite place to lay. No! Oh. <laughs> He's there. <laughs> Uh, I just dropped one dot and picked two up. I can't work that out. I've done that twice now. Um, he's actually gone and moved further under the desk, so... Maybe at the end. He's curled up asleep. Kind of don't want to disturb him. Uh, maybe maybe at the end of the stream I might pick him up, or I might just move the camera let you take a look at him down there. Almost finished with the number eight, and for some reason there is no number nine on the. There's a number. I haven't quite worked out. The um, put the put the letters on you like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, a, b, c, d, e, f. Not quite sure why they don't use the nine. Well, I, I suppose that's because if somebody's looking at, at it upside down, it might be confused with the six. I suppose could be that. Um, but then they have here, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a, that's the thing on that, on the right hand side is what's on the drip on the picture, and the left hand side is what the bags are labelled. So A is labelled bag 9, it's kind of like, why? Why don't I just label them with that, you know, with A? Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, A, why not label the bag with A? Why label it with 9? And then I have to put a translation in. can't quite work out the purpose of that. I suppose if you were doing some in psychedelic colours, you know, the same picture but in different colour schemes, then that would be a, you know, you wouldn't have to, well no, you just, you still have to label the, the I don't understand why bother. 
He just seems a lot of trouble to go to. When they could just label the bags with the actual number that's on the sheet and save you having this problem of uh, converting between you know, uh, A is actually 9 and 8 is actually 8. And, hmm. Yeah, well. There'll be some reason for it. Okay, so do we have any more eights that's visible on there? No, there isn't. Okay, so we'll get rid of this load of eights in here and get out the last colour. I'm getting better at throwing stuff away. Those that's watching that don't know, I'm kind of always loath to throw things away. Like, you know, we've just used all the eight, and when I first started doing this, I'd have been putting them back and putting them back in this pack. Although I did realise the other day, some of these packs they give you plastic bags to put them in, that you know, Ziploc bags. But mm, um, but I, I would put them back painstakingly, put them back in here just in case. And it's kind of like, just in case what? What am I going to use them for? Okay, I might have missed the odd one. Which is why I'm not throwing that away just yet. But it's, you know, if I've missed the odd one, I don't need the 100 that's in there. You know, and I don't need to put another 50 back that I've just used. So I'm getting better at throwing things away. I'm not yet quite getting better at you. Well, I'm sort of getting a little bit better at using materials. Because, for example, that wood that I'm doing the gibber on. It wasn't what I intended to do on that piece of wood. I actually don't know what I was intending to do on that piece of wood. But it's always, it's always a case of, is, yeah, is what I'm thinking of doing on that piece of wood good enough for that wood? <laughs> um, whatever that is. And... Uh, you, usually I kind of go, I don't think it's good enough to do that, you know, that's a, got to keep that wood for something good. Yeah, and of course I never do anything there. Because it's it's not good enough and uh, I'm, I'm starting to learn. That, yeah, if I don't actually use that wood, I'm never going to use that wood. So even if it's not good enough. I'll at least practice so maybe sometime in the future I w it will be good enough. But then I'll have to a different piece of wood then. But... Hmm. I hate wasting materials. Even when I don't want them anymore, I hate wasting materials. Actually, it's something I have got better over the years, things like uh, I used to keep all sorts of like electronic components. Especially if I got like like if I if I got something some components to make something for whatever reason I didn't use them. I always kept them. And of course, but the problem with that is they're often in a little plastic bag somewhere in a box, somewhere in another box, somewhere in a cupboard. And, you can never find them when you want them, and so you end up going out and buying more, even if you, you know you've got them somewhere. So these days, I am a lot better at going. You know what? That project's finished. I've got this left over in the bin because I know that uh, if I make something else, I'll never find them, or very rarely find them. 
and I'll probably spend more time looking for them than it would be to actually order some more. So I am these days a lot better at just going gone. Means I've got a lot less chunk of him. <laughs> I've got more draw space. Still not quite got rid of the pile of stuff that's here yet. But that is primarily waiting until I get the drawers that go in the cabinets that go over there. Or I decide I'll just go out and buy some new cabinets. Which won't be just yet. Yeah, yeah, save up and things. But when I get the drawers, I will then be able to uh, fix them for a start. And then put all this, or some of this stuff that's it in the actual drawers. Then I've got some space behind me. I love space. I don't like crowded, cramped rooms. I'm not claustrophobic, I just don't like them. I'm kind of sort of stressful slightly. Um, I'm a lot more calmer in a in a uh, spacious room with space in it. Which is why I didn't like the old studio that much. It was just it was as spacious and as tidy as I could make it, which uh, wasn't very much, but at least wasn't bad. This one, despite the slight clutter in the middle here behind me, is at least sort of large open space, uh, you know, large open. I can look across and I can see across the room and uh, it makes it a nice relaxed place to do art in. I am starting therefore to use materials up. I've got like I've got some pearls, and um, what I need to do is find a subject to do something with. It must be I want to be photorealistic, so like a photo, for example. And um, but I, <laughs> for many. Uh, many a month it's been. I've been looking for that special thing to do with. <laughs> Don't, uh, just get on with it. Do something. Uh, so at some point we'll probably be doing that when I find something to do. It's now a case of finding something I like as opposed to something special to do with the pearls. Um, Because it will be the first, you know, the first one. I don't know if I'll do any more, but it'll be the first one. And therefore, I need to have something sort of nice that I can maybe hang on the wall or something. Not that I hang much of my art on the wall. I kind of lose interest in the piece once it's made. It's the creating I like, not the, um, not the looking at it afterwards. I do have the odd item around the place. Like an airbrush painting I did of uh, Lady's Eye of Ah, The pyrography stuff. It's just that they're sort of leaning against things rather than up on the wall. Don't like too many things on the wall. Also, uh, find that sort of cluttering Plus, makes it feel claustrophobic.
Right. We'll go down here. Let's finish off this baby elephant, the calf. For no other reason than I feel like it. Which is one of the best reasons for finishing it. There we, there we have the calf complete. It look, you know, I'm just thinking, looking at that picture that you guys are looking at, it looks very much like cross stitch, uh, apart from the sparkle. Cross stitch would have a similar sort of look. Hmm. You could, in, in theory, if this was, uh, well, I suppose it is printed on a canvas, you could quite easily print something like this on Aida, I guess. Uh, I guess so, Aida. Um, and you could do cross stitch, or you could take this as a pattern and just um, just use, do cross stitch with similar looking colours. It'd be a good way, well, for personal use, it would be a good way of getting two, two things for the price of. Impressive one. <laughs> you still got to buy the cotton, but you get a pattern. And you know, if you sort of photocopy, you'd have a pattern at the same time as having this. And then you could do a uh, just use the, use the um, the picture, you know, the original before you put all the stuff on it uh, as a cross stitch pattern. Mm, you wouldn't get the background, of course, but you still have, you know, like a a cow and calf here. And I've got quite a lot of cross stitches to finish as well. Hmm. Maybe while I'm sat watching videos as I do from time to time. Uh, what I ought to do is get one of the cross stitches out and do uh, do some of that whilst I uh, watch videos. Not so sure you guys would want to watch me do cross stitch on stream, but it's probably a completely different audience. It's another one of these crafts that's that's slow uh, to do. Because you know, sewing, sewing crosses isn't fantastically fast. It's another one that's really easy to underestimate how how big something is. I was just thinking, it's I've kind of recently had that sort of discussion. You know, a ten a ten by ten, so ten dots wide, ten dots tall. It's Oh, the stitches, 10 by 10 stitches is a square. Um, that's 100 crosses. That's 200 stitches. And yet it's only 10 by 10. And that's not even an inch. Um, 
in sort of general uh, cross stitch and it wouldn't even be any you know it'd be about the same here um, ten, 10 across is a hundred dots and that's kind of like that sort of square <laughs> so it, it's you know cross stitch or, or you know this I said before but even in cross stitch I'm just trying to guess at how many stitches there are on some of these pieces I mean I've, I've got some on on uh, frames that are uh, what uh, a two and they are almost complete the pattern is an almost complete a two sheet and there must be tens of thousands of stitches on that and uh, just never never crosses your mind really when you're doing it hmm just the sheer numbers Now sometimes you've got to look at a cross stitch and wonder how how on earth did it take that long? But if you then sort of added up the number of stitches, you know, like 156,000 stitches, and then it suddenly becomes, well, that taking a while does sound reasonable, you know? And you go, well, okay, let's do a stitch a second. That's 156,000 stitches, and you don't do a stitch a second by any means. It's more like a stitch every 10 seconds. Um, especially if you're pulling all the hair through. Uh, but, you know, 156,000 a stitch a second, 156,000 seconds. And you know, divide that by 60. That would be 15,600 p by 6. thousand five hundred minutes divide that by 60 that's what about 40 hours continuously non-stop yeah and that would be one stitch a second and as I say it's more like 10 times that at the very least is a 400 hours and then you sort of then get an appreciation I guess of why it took so long Sort of stitch crafts and things, probably, unless you're machine sewing. Something like crochet is probably the fastest one to grow, even, even faster than knitting. Even when you're knitting on double art needles, <laughs> which are thick, by the way. Double art needle. A double art needle has got to be easily as thick as that. And so, you know, so, uh, um, knitting on those size needles, it, it grows pretty quickly, but... Actually, the punch craft rug will probably grow up quite quickly as well. Maybe one of, you know, one of these days I'll maybe have to do um, do one of those and maybe do it on stream just because I've got a fair bit of wool uh, and I've got some backing, some of the canvas that you do it with. Don't quite know what I'd um, do whether I just do like a random pattern or something but make a fairly large rug perhaps using the big punch craft needle with, with the wool. That might be sort of an interesting sort of um, project. Maybe do, honestly, do, maybe do something sort of random, blocky, swirly sort of thing. Just with different colours. Without actually doing a real picture or anything. I tend to like doing pictures, but maybe just uh, do a Random thing. That way I can use random colours. I don't have to worry about colour matching and things.
Okay, one of these days, one of the things I'd quite like to just have a go at doing is doing something like a portrait with Punchcraft. And maybe do a portrait rug. Mind you, that's a little bit sort of. Mm, do a portrait for somebody on, on, on a rug so that they can walk on their face all day. Mm. Ah. That, that sounds like a, um, a mother-in-law joke. <laughs> We are not far. <laughs> We're not far off finishing. That's famous last words, you know. There's probably uh, there's probably about 60 squares to go. <laughs> Maybe I should count them as I go along, just to see. Welcome to counting with Zerogan Art. That's three. <laughs> Maybe you keep count. Those of you who are watching, keep count of how many I'm putting down. So, are you counting? How many have you got so far? If you got a number other than 25, you counted wrong. So if that was 25, yeah, there's probably about 60 when you think. That's in that and that, and that means there's probably about 35 in that space there. Even though it doesn't look like it. Them away. As they go on the floor, then I don't forget about them.
fright No better than the beast hiding underneath It's you Hiding from the freak you are next to me It's you Same thing every week hiding underneath It's you And the very last one. So did you count that? There were 50 in that block. So 50, there were 75, not 60 left. So it, it is surprising, 50 in that space there, and I would not have... Well, I guessed it, 30. And I got it completely wrong, there was 50. But it is just surprising. You, you know, When you looked at it, there didn't look to be 50 spaces there, but there was. So... I can't see any more spaces. That means I've filled them all in. That means it's done. That sounds like Doctor Who. Something from the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. It's got that same thumping bass behind it. Um, I like the Doctor Who thing. So there we go. Calf, cow and a calf, or an elephant and her calf. Little baby elephant. It's done, it's finished. And it's quarter to nine. So I'm not going to start another one tonight. I may start another one tomorrow. Again, just so I rest. Rest my neck and we can go back to carving on Monday. Don't know how much there's left to do on the gibber, but we'll keep going till it's done. <laughs> I'll keep going. We will keep going and we'll get there in the end. We'll do it, yeah. Um, it's not doing too bad because we're making progress. I mean, it's the one thing I um, have always said: you don't get, you don't need patience to do things like carving or things like this. It's it's more stamina than than patience. Patience is when things go wrong and you're trying to get it to go right, and it, you know that's and it's. A pain in the neck that's when you need patience whenever you're doing something and it's just keeps working it's going it's progressing you don't need patience for that because it's the progression itself is what keeps you um, motivated and uh, and getting on with it uh, just lining a few other things up so what we will be doing at this point I think is stopping for the evening thanks very much Wolfie and it sparkles, of course. I won't take it off the board as such, but I'll just make it. Just give it a bit of a wobble. And that's what Oak Magic Dots is all about, really, I think. He's, you've got a nice picture from a distance. I'm sure that's a cue for a song. From a distance. Um, and it sparkles, like that. When you walk past it, it just, just sparkles. But as I was saying, yes, um, that will be it for this evening. A little bit early, yes. But there's not a lot of point in getting another one out and setting that up. Because by the time I've done that, it'll be the end of the stream anyway. So I'm going to say that if you would like to see any of the progress on this, some of it is still available on VODs, if you go up to the videos and uh, click that under Zaragonart you should be able to see some of the uh, some of the earlier times we've done this. Because uh, 
Twitch here is only keeping up for two weeks, so if you'd like to see any that are before that, or if any of the other crafts that we have done, there's five or six or seven or odd things like building helicopters um, in in the past, they are all on YouTube, youtube.com slash Saraganart. Again, look at the videos, they're all in playlists as well, so you can watch them from one through to however many there are. They're in real time though, they are the broadcast recordings, so it's a two-hour broadcast, complete with everything that goes on in a two-hour broadcast. And uh, if you wanted to watch them all, just set aside something like 800 hours. <laughs> it's a long time, isn't it? it? It's fun because on Twitch, as a broadcaster, or as a, uh, an associate, I'm sure, um, well, I don't know whether uh, partners have them as well, but for associates, there's these achievements. And one of the achievements is broadcast for a total of 250 hours, and I think I'm about 87%. And of course, I've got seven, eight hundred hours worth of archive, so I kind of find it funny. I don't know if it's 250 hours since I became an associate or 250 hours full stop, but if it's full stop, they've got it wrong. Uh, if it was, if it was, since I started broadcasting, I, I've got the top achievement. No, yeah, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's a um, little fun. Talking of associates, that means you can contribute, but well, you always could contribute to the, the stream, but you are, um, are in addition then, from just purely following, which is a fantastic help to the stream if you're not already following, please consider it, is of course the other two buttons there, the bits and the subscriptions, which help out the channel enormously in... Uh, being able to buy bits like this, which is nice and fun to do, or, or the carving, which is a bit more serious to do, the wood and chisels and whatever else we're talking about, rotary tools, airbrush, paint, you know, these sorts of things. Um, but that's my advert over, I think. So let's tell you about the next stream, it should be tomorrow evening, starting from approximately 7pm UK time, that's GMT at the moment, which is the same as UTC. I say approximately, occasionally, from time to time, things like um, when we've been out and we get in late, I work late, or there are other events which just delay uh, the start sometimes because you know, meals are important, food is good to eat occasionally. So that sometimes delays the start. But if I'm going to be significantly late or I can't keep the stream, then uh, keep an eye out on Twitter because I do tweet that. Tweet when I go live, I tweet from can't go live, or if I'm going to be significantly late. So, again, there, twitter.com slash Art. And I think with that advert over, <laughs> I'll hand you over to the Twitch adverts. And this, of course, will be Lucy and all um, Egypt is broadcasting. They're not be hosting them. Um, they're great broadcasters. Keep an eye out for them. Lady Lucien, Z Lady Lucien, is an artist and I. No, I can't say that on this stream. But uh, Egypt is also an artist. He's a glass artist, which is why I watch him myself. I watch them both. They're absolutely fantastic, inspirational. Uh, Lady Lucien's um, pastel art is absolutely fantastic. It's his, but it keeps inspiring me to want to try it. But it's a bit messy and I'd have to buy some pastels and I want the ca camera stand first. <laughs> With that, hope I'll see you on the next stream. Bye for now. Hey.
place where I can feel the rain again. I want to reach the mountain where I can soar across the sky. And so my feet start to tremble. They lift off the ground. I leave it all behind. And I can see the horizon. It's cold.